Craig and Elliot. How are y'all? Hey, hey, thank you. Going? How are you? We're going to get right into it and ask y'all the question that everybody wants to know. When is the baby coming? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like my mama. Right. <laughs> 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 she don't even want to know about Mary. She said, yeah. where's that baby coming? We're going to ask the question we ask everybody, which is, uh, how long have y'all been together and how did y'all first meet? You want me to take this one? Yeah, go ahead. Brother. So it's been six years and we met on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. um, it was funny because it was actually like a group of friends that were single. Both he and I were pretty much single at the time. And... Um, we all went out bar hopping like we had a mutual best friend and he invited us all mm -hmm. out bar hopping we went to like three or four spots and then eventually everybody the whole group went back to my place and we were just hanging out um everybody started trickling out then he stayed and we ended up talking and hitting it off and well it's been almost every single day together yeah. since then wow we had our ups and downs where i didn't want to talk to him for a while but <laughs> it's been, it it's been six Definitely. years <laughs> what you see a lot in among our community is that you know at the first sight of any turbulence people start jumping ship and that's not how to make a relationship work so what have been some of your biggest challenges and how have you managed to overcome those my biggest challenge was communication mm -hmm. like just figuring out how to understand what the other person was saying to us or to me, and vice versa. Yeah, and kind of what it meant when they said it. Because it's one way when you say something and then you assume it means something else and you never really relay that to that person, then they're just in their head and have their own conception of like, oh, that's what you meant when you said it. So with communication, it's taking that next step a little further to be like, hey, I said this, but this is what I meant when I mm -hmm. said it to you. Like putting your selfish feelings and wants aside and really trying to figure out where can I compromise with this person I want to be with. Like we are two different people. Like he's him, I'm me. I don't want to change him. I love him. I love him the way he is, but I got to figure out how does the person he is marry with the person I am and how do we, with our differences, make those differences meet in the middle and right i mean we had our rough patches we went to mm -hmm. therapy worked through it and i think therapy was definitely the thing that saved us it it presented a it kind of brought us up to that what he's talking about where we're looking at each other and like okay are you willing to sacrifice are you willing to compromise mm -hmm. like and really being able to talk that through and being able to get to that level that's my first time really doing that to be honest <laughs> so <laughs> I, I really looked at it as in trying to, you know, push myself, you know, out of my normal, like, because everybody's always comfortable. Once it gets hard, like you said, like people are like, oh, no, mm -hmm. let me go back to what I know works for me. The first two years, easy. Yeah. Like it was like everything, you know, honeymoon stage, like <laughs> everything was great. And then after that two years, woo, that but, third year. What happened during that third year? Did, I don't, did you walk in the kitchen one day and see some dishes or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the buildup of that communication piece. Like we were, we were like two ships in the night in that third year where it was where we would, I don't know, we would talk about things and then we would just have that aggression of being like, well, this is what you said to me, you know, I don't know, a couple months ago and that doesn't make sense. Or we would get in arguments, even as simple as cleaning up or even as simple as like, hey, why are you leaving this here? We like to, you know, it should be in this particular place. Mm -hmm. Like he would get mad. I, I would leave the cabinets open. And you're like, well, God damn, do you want to stay with me? Cabinets <laughs> open, you know? And not that he's mad that the cabinets are open. It's kind of like you having those own doubts and things mm -hmm. in your head without communicating those things, we wouldn't know. And that's where we realized therapy would be a good factor for us in order to really understand each other a lot better. We went in there thinking like, Oh, the therapist gonna tell this dude he crazy as hell. Right. He gonna tell That's he gonna tell him that he crazy and I'm right. <laughs> and I think we both came out of it like, oh shit. Right. Like, <laughs> what were your experiences coming out? I was in my freshman year of college, and I had a friend that found out I was dating a guy up at Michigan. And he called my brother. My brother calls me. He's like, I hear you dating a guy at Michigan. What's going on? Tell me what's happening. And I lie. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I hang up the phone. <laughs> I call him back eventually. And I'm like, okay, it's true. But don't tell mom and dad. Please don't tell anybody. 
Um, he hangs up the phone. My dad calls me two minutes later, sobbing, crying, like, son, I love you. Like, you don't have to hide nothing from us. And like, I'm simultaneously like pissed off, but also happy. Cause I'm not gonna lie. I, I think if he hadn't have done that, it would have taken me years to tell my family, even if they knew, like I would, I would have just played that game of like not telling them. And what I've seen other people do, which you might even talk a bit about is like distance myself from my family too, which I did. You know, even after I came out to my family, it took me years later to, you know, to this past to this past year to come out to everyone else publicly. You know, I kind of did it gradually with close friends. And then I found myself distancing myself from people who I probably would have been a lot closer with because I couldn't really tell them what was going on with me. I was like, well, I can't be around you because I don't want them asking me about my girlfriends all the time, asking me about a bunch of things that I can't really answer. And Elliot, what was your coming out experience? I questioned my sexuality, you know, when I was younger, of course, but I, um, my coming out experience is, was to my dad, at least initially, and I was in a relationship with Greg, and we've been, this is in that three-year kind of time frame, and I remember just telling my father, like, hey, you know, this is, I wanted to tell you this. I have been in a relationship with a man for you know the last three years. This is part of the reason why I haven't been as open and you know engaged as I want to be. And when I told him that, like I'll admit, it wasn't like a oh great, you know, uh, kumbaya, like everything's great. Like that was just like he paused, he appreciated the fact that I told him so that he could really understand what was going on with me. And he asked just to have that time. Like he wanted to make sure that he fully understood me and my sexuality and everything that I'm dealing with so that he can better connect with the both of us rather than just being on my side and just being like, yep, you know, I know my son, he came out to me and that's great. Like he really wanted to, it's almost like an empathy type of thing of really trying to really understand it and to be a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I did after that kind of roll it out to my friends, like where a lot of friends where in, you know, like I went to school with or even college with and even people I've met in DC where I wouldn't go around them. Like, because I was like, oh Lord, they're gonna ask me who I'm dating now. And even when they would catch me to ask, I would make up something so that they can assume it's a girl or assume it's somebody else. And I, you know, told them because they noticed I was being distant and, you know, being good friends, they were asking what was going on. And I just simply kind of relayed the same thing I said to my dad, to them. And they're like, hey, you didn't have to worry about that. Like, that was something that you could have just came to us with, you know, raw, without any intention. And honestly, that's not the way it goes through, at least for me in my head, when I'm thinking yeah. about telling people those things. So it was so refreshing to hear that, especially close and true friends, that they were on my side. Mm -hmm. I will add on quickly to that, too, is like the mental anguish in our relationship, I think, because when you're in that phase of hiding and trying to you know, do the smoke and mirrors thing. It's like you are, you don't realize that it spills over into your relationship, like not being able to hold hands in public, not feeling comfortable showing affection towards each other mm -hmm. fully because you're not out and open and you really can't do certain things. I mean, I can remember back in our relationship when we took our first, in one of our first international trips, maybe not our first, but we went to Paris mm -hmm. and it was like two or three years in and we were walking on the streets and it was like the first time we ever held hands in public. Cause we were like, ain't nobody gonna know us over here. We, we can do whatever we want. And I just remember that moment feeling so free, just like the simple act of being able to hold hands on, on the street and like show that affection towards each other mm -hmm. and like a relaxed moment. And we didn't have those moments before we were able to like come up Plus, Paris is gay as hell. So, I mean, you know. Gotta... <laughs> <laughs> look, we looked around and we said, oh, OK, look, we can do a little bit more over here. <laughs> the biggest question, I guess, was why did you feel that you had to hide? That's a lot of stigma well, for me personally. Like there was a lot of stigmas put on, you know, someone that was gay or, you know, had an interest in men in that sense. Like it was feeling unsure because I didn't see anyone similar to me or have any like kind of guidance, you know, even in real world terms to be like, oh, okay, this is okay to do. Or like, it makes me feel comfortable. Like it was one of those scary or fearful moments. So when you have stigmas and you already kind of face stigmas as a black man that you're just trying to deal with in, a, in general, I wasn't really sure I was ready to stack on 
you know, the my sexuality on top of it. And it was uh, that fear and feeling like I wouldn't be able to manage it. And then like the mental anguish that goes with it and emotional. I thought I was going to lose a lot of friends or a lot of, you know, close friends and family that they would probably, you know, ostracize me. And, you know, either I, it would result in me being angry with them or, you know, like whatever. Like I didn't know what was on the other end of it. So it made me really insecure and fearful. Yeah, that thing for me, it was a mix of a little bit of that. It was like, at one point, I really was like afraid to come out, especially when I was younger. I was like, I didn't know how my friends would take it. I wasn't comfortable with myself, quite frankly, because of a, a variety of things. Like, you know, things I'd heard at church, things I'd experienced at school. I wasn't comfortable early on. And so that led to like lying to people. And even once I came out to my family or was outed to my family, um, I... Uh, you know, they embraced me. It was great. I had that support system in place. I had the added fact of like, okay, if I come out of the closet and tell more people, it's not just me I'm impacting. I'm impacting my dad. You know, he's a celebrity. But even beyond that, it's just like even our church community, like I wasn't comfortable yet being a spectacle. And it got to the point, and And I was worried about how it would impact my family too. I mean, people can be vicious, as you know. And so I was worried about all of that. And it got to the point where you like, you know, you feel like you're you're too deep into a lie and you didn't told all these people stuff. I was doing the same stuff, lying about different girls I dated, claiming girls as my girlfriend, you know, stuff like that. And so it got to the point for me where I felt like I was almost too deep in and it got more and more difficult to tell the truth until it finally got to that point where I was like, okay, I don't give a fuck. This is stupid. I'm about to do it. Do both of you come from two parent households? Mm-hmm. There's a, a stigma that since we're talking about stigmas with black gay men, that a lot of us are gay because we come from broken homes or, you know, we're traumatized, but you, you know, all the different things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what is your opinion on that? I mean, obviously y'all come from two parent households that seem healthy. And that's crazy to me already. Cause I know I didn't choose to be gay. I mean, I used to go home and try and pray not to be gay after church. So it's like, and none of it, you know, I love who I am now, but it's not like I chose this lifestyle. I didn't choose to do this. So that's what I always say to people. I'm like, if you have an issue with me and who I am and how I was created, you need to take it up with God because I didn't create myself. You know, God did. And that's why, I, especially like I say to the religious folks, I think um, we are who we are. It's definitely harder on that single parent. Like, that's for sure. And, you know, the child will be affected by it. But I have, in my opinion, I don't think, you know, is going to affect them to where they question, you know, their sexuality or it's going to make them choose what they're going to be like as far as sexually or what their interests are. Mm-hmm. If anything, it will empower them to make a choice on their own. Like, I, I feel like single parents, when you see someone, even with my, you know, my mom, like even when my dad would be, you know, working and she would have to do a bunch of things on her own in that same kind of level, it inspired me to be like, oh, I can do these things on my own as well. Like, I, I feel like it should be more of an aspiration versus trying to say like that because you're a sing, you come from a single parent uh, family that you're going to, you know, this is why you decided mm-hmm. to be gay or why you decided to you know, be interested in the same sex or whatever the case. Like, I don't, I don't really understand or agree with it. There's this idea that, oh, you didn't have a strong, you know, male figure in your life or something like that. My personal experience, you know, my dad was as loving as they come, but I think there is still that expectation that you're going to grow up and have a family and be, a, you know, be in walking the steps of your father. I mean, that's true. Like, I I think about that a lot. I used to think about that a whole lot, especially when I was younger, just because my dad was that, you know, the man's man, like, you know, ooh, you know, and then they assume just because, you know, you are gay that you're somewhat effeminate or you, you know, you lack in some way where I feel like when it comes to the show and what we're trying to at least represent in just in the world is that it doesn't, there's not a silo for somebody that is gay or somebody that, you know, love the same sex. Like there, we are just like anybody, like a heterosexual or cisgender person where mm-hmm. they decide to be is them. Uh, Mathis Family Matters. Talk about what that journey has been like uh, representing black gay love on that platform and what the response has been from the community. Scary, but also really rewarding at the same time. I think for me, it was the fear of how people were gonna receive it. And there, you know, I still get a lot of the comments and questions like, oh, they just did this for attention or why is it such a big deal? 
I, mean, I don't have to explain to you why it's a big deal for us to show representation and for us to really, um, you know, people who haven't seen this before so that they can feel included, so that they can see themselves in someone. I know it would have helped me a lot on my journey when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so that was part of our goal when really being able to document our coming out journey. But what I'm most excited about, to your point, um, I think we have a really special opportunity to just live and just be ourselves. And so, you know, moving forward in season two, it's not necessarily, oh, we're, you know, talking about Greg and Elliot being gay, but we just have an opportunity to live. And I think gay couples deserve that. I know I talked about a, a little bit in the beginning of our relationship. We were afraid to hold hands in public, afraid to kiss. Like we had to unlearn. We're still unlearning, I think, a lot of those things that we have in our heads of like, oh, we shouldn't kiss. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be honest and say on camera, even we were afraid like, oh, should we be kissing on camera? But like, yeah, we should be kissing on camera. Like this is our life. Yep. This is what we do. If you could say anything to the black community, and when we say black community, uh, black gay men or our families about who we are and us living out loud, what would you say? We human, like we are human. We just trying to live life like everybody else. And I think we deserve the love and grace that everybody deserves. And I know it's not a lot of that going around right now, but I think that's one thing we all need to work on is giving each other gay, straight, you know, lesbian, whatever you are, give each other grace and give each other love. I would say just like anything else, man, just to try to, as people, like I, I think about working out, like you need to exercise that love. Like the only way you're going to get fit into be, making everyone comfortable is to continue to exercise it. And mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do in the show, even in our real life, just with the day-to-day -day things. And I hope the black community and just the community in general out there continues to exercise their love with, whoever it is and just to remember to don't don't be shy about it 